Hello everyone and welcome to my bar. My name is Ansel Birch, the Indecisionist, and I will be your dungeon barkeep today. Now, I am no expert mixologist, but like anyone tending bar in a cave, I have an adventurous spirit and a willingness to try anything once. So, what do you say? I, uh, I don't have any recipes or call sheets, there's not a menu for you to look at, but I will, uh, I'll roll some dice. And we'll use that to uh, to decide all of the ingredients that go into a cocktail. And tell you what, I will try it first before I ever offer it to you. Uh, what do you say? If, if I try it first, will you think about it? Excellent. Well, let's go ahead and get started then. The first thing we need to do is choose an essential mixer. So, here we go. We're going to choose that with a D4. And we got a 4, so we're going to be using juice. Uh, that's exciting. I've got a few kinds of juice available. I will probably allow the people who are joining me on the live chat to choose which juice is going to go into today's cocktail. Uh, it might be something fresh squeezed. I've got a bunch of nectars on hand. There's a lot of opportunities with juice, so that's an exciting one to start off with. Uh, but next up is a garnish, and uh, I've got a D6 here to choose garnishes. Uh, three, so that is going to be olives. Um, juice and olives is always a uh, daunting prospect, but uh, I, f I, feel, I feel good about it. I feel like we can make this one work, uh, especially if, as tends to be the, the habit, the olives end up just sort of being a, a, a side dish that gets served along with a cocktail. Uh, so let's go ahead and choose a less essential mixer. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of those, so I'm going to choose that with a D8. All right, six soda water. All right, so we're gonna get something fizzy in here. It's very cool. Uh, juicy, fizzy, like it. Okay, all right. This this is this is promising. I'm excited. So let's go ahead and uh, keep going and find out what the main liquor is gonna be. Obviously, this this is gonna be the star of the show today. Uh, so I'm excited to put in vodka. Okay. Okay, so vodka and soda with some olives and juice. All right, all right, this is... The juice is going to be the star of this show, uh, so I hope we choose well. Uh, I'm excited to find out how that goes. And just to, just to reassure you that I have some idea of what I'm doing, uh, today I'm going to go ahead and do, give myself a little pop quiz. We're going to roll a d12 on this chart of bar terms, and that will uh, give me something to uh, sort of uh, have to explain. I got a quick vocabulary quiz. Uh, can you tell I was one of those kids who really enjoyed standardized testing day? Uh, there we go. Seven. Float. All right. So float is um, it's part of the layering um, uh, skill set. Usually you're going to um, put usually about a quarter ounce or less of, uh, of liquor uh, onto the top of your mixed beverage, and it's going to create this, like, layer of, of alcohol on the top. Now, this can do a couple things. Uh, it can visually distinguish the drink, creating, like, a striation effect. Um, it can uh, affect the smell of the drink because, you know, the when you bring it up to your mouth that first time, that the whatever the liquor you're floating on top is is going to be the first thing that hits you. So if you really want the nose to pick up on the the gin scent or the rum, um, pouring a little bit of that on the top is a good effective way to make sure that it really has that impact. Uh, if it's a high proof alcohol like 151 or ever, not that you should ever put Everclear into a cocktail, um, but a, an example would be Everclear. Um, you can set it on fire. That's always fun. So you can flame a float. Um, that's popular, especially with tiki, tiki drinks. Um, but yeah, so there's a lot of opportunities for float. Um, I think I'll try to float the vodka on today's cocktail. I think that that's absolutely doable. Um, and it might create some interesting visual for whatever juice we're using as the main, uh, although... The soda water is going to absolutely ruin that, so no promises. But I'll try. I'll try it. Uh, all right. So the last thing we need to choose before we uh, actually put this together is what to call this uh, 
interesting mixture of, of ingredients. Uh, and we're going to do that with a D20, the star of the show. Eight. Ship Mimic. Uh, now, uh, this one was absolutely submitted by one of my players from my regular Wednesday night games. Uh, hey out there. Uh, uh, it's good to have you guys checking in every once in a while. Uh, we once had the great idea that, you know, mimics can be any size. And how cool would it be to have an entire ship that's a mimic? Uh, and that was just too good an idea to pass up. So I did, in fact, insert it into one of our games at one point. And uh, it was it was a really good it was a really good session. Uh, if you're ever playing a game where you're going to hit the high seas, I really, really, I want to suggest the idea of a ship mimic to you because even when you've already talked about it, there's no way anybody sees that thing coming. It's it's very good. Uh, all right, so uh, this is going to be the ship mimic, uh, and let's go ahead over to the bar top cam and put it together. All right, we're going to build today's cocktail in the glass, uh, and that's going to start with mango nectar, as selected by the folks at home who are watching this live on Twitch. If you'd like to get in on our next live cocktail-a-thon, uh, that'll be coming up in uh, early February. Uh, check out the website for that date. Uh, but yeah, early February will be our next live cocktail-a-thon on location, which I'm very excited about. Now, normally I wouldn't measure my uh, fruit juice like this, but for the benefits of making a repeatable cocktail, let's go ahead and do... Well, let's do three ounces. There we go. Roughly three ounces of mango juice. Mango nectar, I should say. Next up is our soda water. So we should go ahead and put a couple D6 of cold damage into here. Now, I normally make this joke about D6 of cold damage, but I would like to show off a little bit today because I actually got these ice dice. These were created by John and Oliver on Kickstarter. Uh, they are, uh, it's a full set, a full seven die set of dice uh, in ice cube trays. And uh, not only did I back this on uh, Kickstarter myself, but uh, because I do this show, people think of me uh, when they get dice ice trays, and uh, I was gifted an extra. So I have three full sets of ice dice in here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead, and instead of D6s, as is traditional, today I am going to use D4s. So let's go ahead and pop a couple D4 of cold damage in here. Maybe I'll work my way up the dice progression as the shoot goes on. All right. All right, so we've got a few D4 of cold damage in there. Next up is... Next up is soda water. We're just going to fill that to a low wash line with soda water. And finally, we're going to try and float an ounce of vodka on here. All right, so this jigger is actually pretty rough for floating out of, so I'm going to going to float out of this jigger. All right. Proper floating technique, you want to use the back of your bar spoon to break up the flow of liquid, uh, and that's going to cause it to fall around the top and not disturb the surface tension of the drink so much. Uh, and because the um, 
water and mango juice are more dense than the vodka, this should sit on top satisfyingly. Now, uh, the downside here is that the bubbles in the soda water are likely to interrupt the float and cause some um, uh, distribution. But we're going to try. We're going to try. And uh, so we're just going to pour real slow, nice and easy. All right. I'll be honest with you, friends at home, that didn't work at all. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and put the second ounce of vodka in uh, normal like. Because otherwise, this would be a very underproof cocktail. All right, so we're just going to pour that in there. Womp womp. And last but not least, we're going to garnish with some cocktail olives. As there was some uh, feedback about how uh, my flavored olives might uh, put some people off, I have gone ahead and gotten regular old pimento olives to be my go-to for this round of cocktails. So there we are. Ship Mimic. But how does it taste? Here we go, the Ship Mimic. Hmm. All right, so the mango nectar, as predicted, is uh, doing all the work. But the vodka and the um, club soda have thinned it out so much that um, it's really losing a lot of that mango juice impact that you would probably expect. Um, which means it's a lot less sweet. That's nice. Uh, it's a lot less potent. Um, it needs some... I think, I think it needs a dash of bitters. So let's go ahead and give it that help that I think it wants. So we're just going to give it a quick dash of bitters. There we go. Stir it in with my olives just to give those a chance to like really have an impact there. I enjoy that somehow this orange beverage is serving as a, an invisibility tonic. Yeah, that's what it needed. It needed something just to like break up the single note of it. Um, and that the dash of bitters really, really makes the difference here. Uh, this is actually really nice. It's a, you know, it's a spritzer is what it is. When it comes right down to it, we're putting vodka and soda water in with a, with a juice. So, you know, this is, this is known territory. No one's going to be mad about this. It's good stuff. Um. And, uh, you know, that being said, the last question for today's episode is what kind of adventure would I put this ship mimic into? And um, I think that um, a drink like this is kind of nice to go anywhere. And I think that maybe that's the... <laughs> that's the mimic of it right is like you you can always you should always suspect that there might be a mimic about because you never know and uh when it comes right down to it uh, a creative dm whenever you're lost for something any object in the room can be a mimic and that'll spice up the session just just right away uh mimics are great that way um uh, so I think this is in that same vein. Like maybe maybe this is this is a Dungeoneers cocktail, the sort of thing you you drink at the 
adventuring society, you know, not necessarily a tavern where people meet up and, and um, you know, exchange bulletins on nearby, you know, available quests. No, no, no. We're, we're talking about like a, a place that is devoted to being an adventurer. Um, that's the sort of place where, you know, people run into mimics all the time in their daily lives. And so they've, you know, created this cocktail that mimics, ah, that, uh, that echoes the, the sort of universal, uh, placement of, uh, of a mimic. So I, I think that this is, this is the go-to drink at your local adventuring society, uh, clubhouse. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I'm, I'm checking out the chat from our, our live taping of today's episode and a quilting dancer, who's a, a fabulous DM, uh, says that she's never run a Mimic in a game yet and she should try one. And I absolutely agree. Mimics are so fun um, because, again, they can be anything. And um, based upon their size, you can change, you know, their key stats. Um, so it's a nice way to break up uh, uh, a session that is otherwise like getting really story heavy or really dire. Um, you know, in the course of a, of a campaign, I, at least for me, a lot of times there will be instances where I find that, um, you know, I always want to focus on story. I want, I want everything that happens to be helping the players learn more about the plot, right? Uh, or if not the main plot, a plot, Right, so maybe this is uh, this bit is about a subplot. Maybe this is tied to somebody's backstory. But regardless of what the plot is, everything should be telling you a story. You don't want to just have a fight for the sake of a fight, in my opinion. Um, but in the course of doing that, for me, I find that um, occasionally there's there's like a swath of stuff being way too dire, um, and so. Just a little, like, something, just a quick fight with a treasure chest that you didn't think you had to be worried about. Um, you know, nobody's in peril. It doesn't take the whole night. You're not losing your whole uh, session to it. Um, but you still get an opportunity to have a, a fun combat, and it sort of breaks up that um, flow of importance, I guess. Um, so mimics are really nice for that. It's sort of like a comic relief uh, monster in that way. At least that's been my experience. That's what I use them for. All that being said, friends, thank you so much for joining me here today. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And if you did, like, comment, subscribe, all the things that YouTubers tell you to do. And until next time, drink adventurously. Refreshing. <laughs>